Read the Bible every day so you'll be full of faith. Welcome you to join Bible Race to read the entire Bible in two years. I believe God will bless you, He will lift you up, and your life will never be the same. The Book of 1 Samuel, Chapter 3 The Lord Calls Samuel Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli. And the word of the Lord was rare in those days, there was no frequent vision. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his own place. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, and he said, Here I am. And he ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, lie down again. So he went and lay down. And the Lord called again Samuel. And Samuel arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. And the Lord called Samuel again the third time, and he arose and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came and stood, calling as at other times, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant hears. Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house from beginning to end. And I declare to him that I am about to punish his house forever for the iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be atoned for by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay until morning, then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. And Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli. But Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. And he said, Here I am. And Eli said, What was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything, and he hid nothing from him. And he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan to Beersheba knew that Samuel was established as a prophet of the Lord. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. The Book of 1 Samuel, Chapter 4 The Philistines Captured the Ark And the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went to battle against the Philistines. They encamped at Ebenezer, and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. The Philistines drew up in line against Israel, and when the battle spread, Israel was defeated before the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men on the field of battle. And when the people came to the camp, the, the elders of Israel said, Why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh, that it may come among us and save us from the power of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh and brought from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. As soon as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout, so that the earth resounded. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shouting, they said, What does this great shouting in the camp of the Hebrews mean? And when they heard that the Ark of the Lord had come to the camp, the Philistines were afraid, for they said, A God has come into the camp. And they said, Woe well to us, for nothing like this has ever happened before. Woe to us! Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? These are the gods that struck the Egyptians with every sort of plague in the wilderness. Take courage and be men, O Philistines, lest you become slaves to the Hebrews as they have been to you. Be men and fight. So the Philistines fought, and Israel was defeated, and they fled every man to his home. And there was a very great slaughter, for thirty thousand foot soldiers of Israel fell. And the ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, died. The Death of Eli A man of Benjamin ran from the battle line and came to Shiloh the same day, uh, with his clothes torn and with dirt on his head. And when he arrived, Eli was sitting on a seat by the road watching, for his heart trembled for the ark of God. And when the man came into the city and told the news, all the city cried out. When Eli heard the, out, the sound of the outcry, he said, What is this uproar? Then the man hurried and came and told Eli. Now Eli was ninety-eight years old, and his eyes were set so that he could not see. And a man said to Eli, I am he who has come from the battle. I fled from the battle today. And he said, How did it go, my son? 
He who brought the news answered and said, Israel has fled before the Philistines, and there has also been a great defeat among the people. Your two sons also, Hophni and Phinehas, are dead, and the Ark of God has been captured. As soon as he mentioned the Ark of God, Eli fell over backward from his seat by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died, for the man was old and heavy. He had judged Israel forty years. Now his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant, about to give birth. And when she heard that the, the news that the Ark of the God was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed and, bowed and gave birth, for her pains came upon her. And about the time of her death, the woman attending her said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have borne a son. But she did not answer or pay attention, and she named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel, because the Ark of God, had been captured and because of her father-in-law and her husband. And she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. Amen. The following is the English translation of Pastor Martina Huang's teaching on 1 Samuel chapter 3-4, to translated by Ray. Read the Bible every day so you will be full of faith. So today we are going to read 1 Samuel chapter 3 and 4. In chapter 3, we will see how Samuel is being called as prophet and he starts to hear the word of the Lord and the word of God came back to Israelites again. And in chapter 4, we will see that all the judgment that God had pronounced against the family of Eli in chapter 2 start to come true. And so in chapter 3 verse 1, the boy Samuel, at that time he was roughly 12 years old, he was ministering to the Lord in the presence of Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days. There was no frequent vision. The word vision in some translation is translated as revelation. So basically it means when the word of the Lord was rare, when people no longer has direction, people cast out restraint and start to do whatever they want, and they just have fun, enjoy their life, because we don't have any purposes, We there is, there's nothing for us to try to accomplish. And in the history, we can always see that God always lead his people do his word either when they were leaving Egypt when they are entering the promised land God keeps speaking to men and he become king to lead his people but in a time of judges because the Israelites they were rebellious so the word of the Lord was rare in those days and so God basically no longer speaks anymore and because at that time there was no king in Israel so everyone do what is right in their own eyes but do you so do you know that when God stops to speak, it's actually the greatest judgment and discipline that he can do on us. So may the Lord help us that, you know, sometimes a lot of things that we don't ask God because we always thought, oh God, you will never speak to me. So we just start to do things according to our own will. We really need to stop doing things like this. We, it's better for us to not do anything just like the israelites lord i only will move when you ask me to move and if you didn't ask me to move then i would just stay at the same place i really believe that god is so willing to speak to us if we really have this honest heart willing to listen and in verse 3 it talks about the lamp of god the lamp of god basically is the golden lamp stand in the tabernacle and it's mentioned in exodus chapter 27 so this golden lamp stand is supposed to always have the light on and it can never be extinguished so basically the high priest has to deal with the golden lamp stand has to deal with this lamp in the morning and in the evening when he's burning the incense on the golden altar of incense so you can see that eli he is always still doing these routines but his eyesight has begun to grow dim so that he could not see so here we can see that all the routine was being kept, all the formality is there, but the person, he is just doing the business. His heart is no longer on God. So today, shall we also spend some time to really reflect all the serving that we have been doing. So what we say, what we do, and the thing that we try to, the time we spend, the thing that we give out, do we really do it for God? Or do we start to just think that it's an obligation? And let me tell you, if you keep staying like this, keep working it as an obligation, then you will find that your eyesight will start to grow dim and then become darker and darker. You will no longer have the ability to discern God's will. And then you will start to feel like, why am I keep doing this? And then later on, you will start to ask, why am I the only one working? on this and then you will start to be easily offendable why how come when I, I have done all these things no one is giving thanks to me and people dare to tell me what are the things that i should improve actually this is the sign that our eyesight has grown dim and we cannot see clearly anymore 
And in chapter 3, verse 4 to 8, we can see that the Lord called Samuel for three times. And each time Samuel thought that Eli was calling after him. So he went to Eli and said, here I am for you called me. And Eli always told him, I did not call, lie down again. You have to remember at that time, Samuel was just 12 years old. When he was at sleep, when someone called him, he immediately get up and come in front of his leader. Their family, you have to remember, today Samuel is wholeheartedly obeying Eli. And Eli, he is not a good example. He doesn't love God. He's not very faithful to the Lord. And he also cannot hear God's voice. But he still, Samuel is still very faithfully obeying him. And in verse 7, it talks about now Samuel did not yet know the Lord and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. So basically at that time, Samuel still doesn't have this intimate relationship with God. And so that's why he could not hear any voices and he had never received revelation. It basically indicates that his relationship with God is not that deep. But so here you can also see that obedience is actually a character of Samuel. And so that's why later on, Samuel can very naturally talk to God, say that, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. So here, this is a truth that you have to remember. If someone who doesn't know how to tell his earthly authority that here I am, and then he would not be able to tell the Lord, saying that, Lord, speak, Lord, for your servants here. So today, we oftentimes will think that, oh, if God speaks to me, of course I'm willing to obey. But it's hard for me to obey to men, you know, because men sometimes will try to be controlling. And also this person, maybe he doesn't love God as well. And also maybe he doesn't hear God's voice that clearly. But you have to remember here, Eli, he can't even listen to God's voice anymore because at that time, the word of the Lord was rare and there was no frequent vision. But Samuel, he still chose to respond because he acknowledged that Eli is the high priest. It's his spiritual authority. So today, if our obedience is, is optional, oh, it will depend on whether this person is good or bad. I have to see how does the things unfold. Then I will optionally, I will choose to obey depends on the scenario then in that case it's it will be impossible for us to wholeheartedly obey in front of the lord and next in verse 8 when the lord called samuel for the third time eli perceived that the lord was calling the boy therefore eli said to samuel go lie down and if he calls you you shall say speak lord for your servant hears so indeed in verse 10 god started to call to samuel again and samuel immediately responds just like what eli said to him speak for your servant Hears. So this sentence is actually the beginning when Samuel start to receive this prophetic training. So servant is his position and here is his attitude. So dear families, this is really important. Today, anyone who wants to serve the Lord, we really need to have this attitude to be a servant, knowing that we are unworthy servants. We have only done what was our duty and we have to be able to listen. You know, frequently we are very willing to serve and help. But oftentimes, we, it's difficult for us to listen to people's suggestion or correction. And when we l hear any correction, we will be like, oh, now you entrust me to do this. Why do you need to ask so many things? Or maybe we heard any correction, then we get hurt. You know, their families today, um, Samuel, he was just 12 years old. He started to learn how to obey promptly and have this ability to hear and listen. So from this, we can learn two things. The first one is that we really need to teach our child from their young age. When they say, when we say anything, they need to learn to obey immediately and respond immediately. And the second thing is that we need to be able to have an ear that can hear. So, you know, for us, we are now grown up adults. No one will train you anymore. We need to require of ourselves. Either it's our pastor or small group leader, our parents or our coworker, whatever thing that they told us, we need to learn to promptly obey and respond. And also, we need to be able to listen. You know, now there's actually not many people will be willing to speak truth to you. Unless we always tell people around us, hey, if you see anything in me that needs to be changed, that needs correction, I really hope that you can speak to me so that our relationship can really be speaking truth in love. So this is something that we can really share with people around us and so that we can have a correct mindset when we are serving is that I'm your servant. 
I, your servant listen. And so next, in verse 11, Then the Lord said to Samuel, Behold, I am about to do a thing in Israel, at which the two ears of everyone who hears it will tingle. So in verse 11 is the first challenge for Samuel to be a prophet, is that he is going to deliver a bad news that is so bad that everyone hears it will tingle to his spiritual leader, to his spiritual cover. You know what? It's much easier for us to deliver a good news, but it's really hard for us to deliver a bad news. You know, no one will want to hear it. You know, in the past, throughout the history, all the prophets, if they are delivering bad news or about judgment, they are either being uh, bitten or they are put into the prison. So this is the first challenge for Samuel to be a prophet. You know, many of us really want to have this prophetic gift. I want to see, I want to hear. And this is actually also my frequent prayer. But in you, well, we have this fear of man that we are trying to be people pleasing. Today, if God really gives you a prophet, prophecy, that this prophecy is actually a bad news that will make everyone's ear tingle and ask you to speak to a spiritual cover. Will you be willing to say it? Do you have the courage to say that? So today, you know, if we only share about God's love for everyone, but we didn't say that for the one who is not, who does not believe their sins are convicted, then basically we're only sharing a half gospel. And all the half gospel is not a complete gospel. And I really believe in the end time, it will become more and more challenging to faithfully preach God's words. Today, if the people around you, they are not doing the right thing, will you try, will you be silent so that you can maintain the relationship or will you try to speak up encouraged. So may the Lord really help us. It's better is open rebuke than hidden love. So, you know, I really see that one of our brother, he shared with the other coworker saying that it's not right for you to take the office supply from your company. That is not right. He speaks truth in love that really touched me. And the other brother is re also has a willing heart to listen, just like Samuel. And then after he heard the correction, he also started to realize that he is not doing the right thing. So he also repent. So may the Lord really help us that we dare to speak out and we also can listen. So in verse 15 to 18, Eli called Samuel and said, what was it that he told you? Do not hide it from me. My, may God do so to you. And more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So previously, we mentioned the first challenges is to deliver this bad news to his leader. That is the first lesson that he need to learn. And then basically, it means everything that he heard from the Lord, he cannot hide it. Otherwise, it will be like what Eli said. May the Lord do so to you and more. So their families, if the Lord makes you see something that is not right, that there is some discord in the church, that you are supposed to say it, but you did not say it, actually, we have to bear the consequence of the sin in front of God. And next from verse 18, there is a very shocking thing that happened. After Eli heard the judgment, he said, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Let him do what seems good to him basically means that let him do what is right in his own eye. So you know here, Eli, this is the second time that he heard God's very strict condemnation from the Lord. But his response is still the same. If that's the case, then let it be. Let God do whatever he wants to do. He didn't do according to what the proverb have says. If you strike him with a rod, he will not die. If you strike him with a rod, you will save his soul from Sheol. But Eli, he didn't listen. He just said, oh Lord, if you think that's right, then just so be it. Then just do it. Indeed, his sight has grown dim. He has. He is still able to deal with the lamp of God, but the lamp inside him, he did not take care of it. He did not make the lamp inside him to brighten up. So dear families, today when we sin against God and other people has come to correct us, but we still neglect it, we overlook, we don't care, we did not seriously try to change things, make things right, then indeed the judgment will come and every word will come to fulfillment. So next in verse 19 to 21, we start to see these two very different services. The serving of Eli is a serving in flesh. When he was serving God, the word of the Lord was rare and there was no frequent vision. So the God's people was very desperate and the entire country was chaos as if there's no God and no king among them. And the other serving is the serving of Samuel. It's a serving in spirit. He is willing to obey God completely and all the things that God want him to say, he will not hide. And the thing 
something that God does not want him to say, he will not say it. So that's why there's this serving in verse 21. And the Lord appeared again at Shiloh for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel at Shiloh by the word of the Lord. So here it's a new generation. It's a new era. It's a time when God's voice come back to God's people. And here in verse 19, I have to mention, as Samuel grew and the Lord was with him and let none of his word fall to the ground. So today, God is able to let uh, every single word from Samuel never falls to the ground. It's because of these two learning that I just mentioned. The first thing is that every word that God gave him, he does not hide it. And the second obedience is that whatever God does not want him to say, he will not say it. So as I listen to this, I am really convicted by the Lord. Their families today, indeed, there are many foolish talk, words of complaints, bitterness, judgment, and things that is not meaningful, like cruel joke, or anything that is not edifying. May the Lord, may the Holy Spirit really rule over our tongue, really rule over the things that we say, so that our tongue will not be blessing God at the same time by cursing others in the other time. Our word will no longer be a mixture of the bitter water and the sweet water. So may the Lord really cleanse our word and really refine our word so that all everything that we say can keep aligned with the Lord. And so God's will will be able to be proclaimed from our mouth. And in chapter 4, in the beginning, now Israel went out to battle against the Philistines. They encamped at Ebenezer and the Philistines encamped at Aphek. So Abinazar is opposite to Aphek, basically. And here, let me talk about the Philistine. Philistine basically is the ancestor of Palestinian. And so the Philistines, they came in 12th century BC from the island of Crete in the Mediterranean Sea. They migrate to the playing in the land of Canaan. So they used to be an oceanic um, people and then they are really good at battle and they also have the ability to make iron thing and then so they are able to make chariot and really good armor so that they have a good advantage in terms of warfare. And then also they migrate from the island to the land so they just keep fighting and then fight towards the heel of Ephraim. And then so they are trying to attack Shiloh. At that time, the Ark of the Covenant is in Shiloh. And so today, the nowadays Palestinians, they are not 100% Philistines because, but instead it's a mixture of many, many um people after second century. And before the seventh century, most of them were Hellenistic Christian. And in the seventh century, when they were being conquered by the Arabics, actually at that time, they were still mostly Christian. Only until 1187, after they were being conquered by Saladin, they become Islamic. And in the time of the judges, the Israelites, they were controlled by the Philistines for 40 years. And so in verse 3 to 4 in chapter 4, the Israelites, they were defeated and they start to think that, hey, why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? And so in verse 4, they were like, okay, let us bring the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord here from Shiloh. And in the time of Old Testament, the Ark of the Covenant represents God's leadership. It's a reminder for the people that the covenant that they made between God and them. But the Ark of the Covenant itself, it doesn't have any magical power. It cannot call out to God. And we need to know that today, we have victory not because of the Ark of the Covenant, but it depends on the Lord of hosts above the two cherubim. It's only because of God himself that you can overcome, you can conquer the enemy. And you have to remember here, the two sons of Eli really triggered God's anger and the Israelites, they do not fear God, but they thought that if they bring the Ark of the Covenant, then they will be able to conquer the enemy. Then you can see that this is a complete misunderstanding. So you know, at that time, not only do they don't fear God, actually what they have been doing is that they are treating God as an idol. I don't need to worship you every day, but now I need to fight a battle. So I will just bring you up to the front line. And in verse 5, as soon as the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came to the camp, all Israel gave a mighty shout so that the earth resounded. But here you see, see the Israelites, their shout is actually not because they honor God as their king, but it's just a fleshly excitement when they are worshiping idol. 
because they are hoping that this Ark of the Covenant can help them to have victory, but they don't care whether or not they live a lifestyle of obedience. Are they pleasing to the Lord? So dear families today, if we don't honestly listen to God's word and don't have this honest heart to obey God today, even if during the worship in the gathering, no matter how excited or how passionate our emotion is, but after the gathering has finished, you will find that everything returned to the same thing. And then that's why there are some people will say, oh, we don't need to worship like that. We don't need this kind of pursuit of God. We don't need this gathering because things never change. Let me tell you, it's not because that these gatherings are useless, but it's because that person himself is not right. So today, when he come in front of God, he only have this excitement and his emotion, just like he's attending a concert. It's just a release of his emotion, fleshly emotion. But later on, it's very interesting that in verse 7 to 9, when the Philistine, they saw the Israelites were shouting and they are start to afraid because they said, oh, a God has come into the camp. Who can deliver us from the power of these mighty gods? Here, the gods is in plural because they believe that there are many gods. So they just think that the is God of the Israel is just one of the gods. And so they think that there are many gods among them. So that's why they say, oh, woe to us. So they start to encourage themselves in verse 9, take courage and be men, all Philistines. So actually, even though the Ark of the Covenant is at the front line, but actually their family, this battle is a battle between flesh and flesh. So now we will just see whose flesh is stronger. And previously I mentioned that the Philistine, they have know how to make the weapon using iron. But at that time, the weapon of Israelites was still very far behind. So later on, we will see that the Israel was defeated, the Ark of God was captured, and the two sons of Eli, Hafni and Phineha, died. And next in verse 14, when Eli heard the sound of the outcry, he said, what is this uproar? Then the men hurried and came and told Eli, Israel had fled before the Philistine, and there has also been a great defeat among the people. Your two sons also are dead, and the Ark of God has been captured. As soon as he mentioned the Ark of God, Eli fell over backward from his seat by the side of the gate, and his neck was broken, and he died. So here we can see that all the prophecies that were made in chapter 2 now all come true here. And next in verse 19, now his daughter-in-law, the wife of Phinehas, was pregnant, about to give birth, and when she heard the news that the Ark of God was captured, and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, he bowed and gave birth for her pain came upon her. She named the child Ichabod, saying, The glory has departed from Israel. In verse 22, And she said, The glory has departed from Israel, for the ark of God has been captured. So Ichabod, this name actually means there is no glory. So here, the daughter-in-law of Eli proclaimed the spiritual atmosphere of God's people. And I also believe that either it's at the time or right now, it serves as a reminder for us. Today, their families, were it not for God's permission, no one can capture the Ark of God. Were it not for that Jesus, he's willingly go upon the cross, no one can hand him to the soldier of the Roman Empire. Today, when the Israelites, they thought that they don't need to fear fear God in their everyday life. They can do whatever they want in their everyday life. As long as I have the Ark of God and God's presence will be with me and I will have victory. But because of these misunderstandings, in order for God to teach, to discipline his people, he is even willing to allow his Ark being captured. So dear families, it is indeed a terrifying thing when God's revelation, his vision, and his voice depart from God's people. So today, shall we encourage each other that we need to practice this one this thing every day that we are willing to listen we are a servant i want to be a servant i need to have an ear that can hear i need to be able to receive correction and suggestion and every word that god entrusted to me i will not hide and anything that god does not want me to say i will not say amen dear bible race viewers and families in christ thank you for watching our videos we hope our sharing can enrich your life if you find the content helpful, we hope you will support our ministry so we may continue to produce high-quality videos to serve the Kingdom of God and hope to bless more people's lives. You can donate in the following ways. Online giving by PayPal. If you are residing in Taiwan, you may also donate by bank transfer. Thanks again for your viewing and support. Every contribution is our greatest encouragement. We sincerely appreciate your support May God bless you abundantly. Don't forget to subscribe 
like, comment, and share. Dear families, we hope that you enjoy the Bible race as much as we do. If you are willing to volunteer to translate the original Chinese teaching into English or assist with video editing, please email service at 360sunrise.com. Thank you.